Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for Bar Exam Tape. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, July 19th. We are six, count them, six days until the July 2023 bar exam. That is oh. hard to wrap my head around because it doesn't seem all that long ago that we were talking about this exam that was way out in the future. And I guess I would say if you're a February 2024 bar taker, February you will appreciate that July you was working. So there you go. We have with us today our esteemed panel. Judge Dawson is here. Amanda is here. Brianna is here. June is here. And we've got lots of questions. I asked you this week to let me know what your last challenge was leading up to the bar exam. We got some great comments. We're going to throw them out to our panel and talk about them and see what we can do to give you some answers and direction in this last week. I think that is everything that's going on. Tracy, I know you're going to talk later today about container ships. Got no idea what that has to do with anything, but okay, we're going to see what that is. As I said, we sent out an email this week and we said, tell us what your last big challenges with a week to go before the exam. And we got a wide range of comments. Some that said, look, I'm in pretty good shape. Some that said, struggling here. So we're going to throw these out and just see what the panel wants to do and what their take on it is. The first one is actually a pretty straightforward question. The student said, I am dealing with the unknown of taking the bar exam on a laptop. This is somebody who I think has not done laptops before or had some problems. I'm going to throw this off to you, Amanda, first, what about using the laptop and making sure that everything is good on the exam? Yeah. One thing is make sure you're bringing your charger. You don't want your laptop to die, no matter how charged it is. There's usually plug strips to plug it in. Make sure that you've practiced with the exam soft. A lot of jur jurisdictions like give you the exam software to mess around with beforehand. Make sure everything works. Make sure nothing else is open on your laptop. And I would shut it down and restart it the night before the exam so that when you open it up, there's no weird updates going on with it and make sure it like turns back on. The other thing I'll say, and I've had this happen to students before, please make sure you carry your laptop in like a carrying case or protective case or like with you at all time. You don't want to drop your laptop the day before the exam or anything like that. So that's what I say. say. And also there's usually a checklist on your jurisdiction website if there's special things for your jurisdiction that you need to do with your laptop. Anybody else want to jump in on this? Brianna, you got anything to add? Okay. Tracy, I'll you let, got something? You no, know, it's not too late to go over to a big box store, not big box bar and fam store, but big box store and get yourself a wireless keyboard that will give you more room between the keys. So if you have fat fingers, sometimes on a laptop, that can be really annoying. But if you just get a wireless keyboard like this one, then, you know, you can practice on the weekend using it. And it, it really gets rid of that little tension that comes along with trying to work on a little laptop. You can work more like on a desktop that way. They're not expensive. And I think it, it may help many of you in your typing. Brianna, you got anything to add there? I All great advice. The only thing I would potentially add is if it's making you nervous because the exam software, don't hesitate to go in and take another practice test. Log in, make sure it's obviously compatible with your system. Make sure that it's you're comfortable with that software. But that's pretty much it. Hey, good. Hi, Sammy. Good to have you with us. Hi, sorry. I we was are... having technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, I understand. We were just talking about bringing a laptop to the bar exam and one of the challenges of the unknown it's really a matter of just practicing and getting comfortable, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Extension cords, if you have, for just prepare. They normally have, I wouldn't rely because they're, by the time the test starts, they're almost done with the extent, almost out of extension cords. So whatever you feel like you need, do. One big mistake I made, I kept, I have, a, I, I used a Surface Pro and I kept my sleeve it's like a little cover sleeve and I had to actually go back after getting scanned, walking through the detector. I had to actually go back in the general test taking room and leave it there to go get back in line. So just little minor things that 
little things that you need to remember. Try to get them out of the way or do a checklist even. Yeah. And be chill. Stuff's going to happen. So just know it's going to happen and just relax. Don't very little of it is fatal. Okay. It feels awful sometimes, but it's all workable. Another big challenge question, we got a lot of questions around this, had to do with the multi-state. And one one student said, I'm having trouble with MBE timing. Now, a couple of things here. First of all, we have an MBE workshop. It's two sessions with Amanda. And I know, Amanda, you're busy, but you still got some room to take on people if they want to do this in the next week. Yeah, just be prepared that you're not going to get in the same day. I have a lot of weekends availability, evening availability, but we can make it work if you're still struggling, not sure if you're using selective intuition or in general, you feel like you need to talk through your approach. Yeah. And what you're going to learn in that workshop and what we've been saying all along in the course is that 90 seconds is the sweet spot to answer an MBE question. If you're having trouble with timing, it's because you're not using selective intuitions because you're grinding on certain questions. I want to remind you that there is no degree of difficulty value that's put on a particular question. Every question on the MBE counts exactly the same. And so a tough question doesn't get you style points. And sometimes you get hung up on the tough question and then you don't get to the easy questions that are there for the taking, the low hanging fruit. So this week, practice with a 90 second egg timer or a 90 second digital timer. Practice with a timer on your computer. Practice with someone counting to 90. I don't care. Just 90 seconds is what I want. And if you'll just answer in 90 seconds, the reality is you'll do just fine. And it's hard to get people over that hump, but that's the reality. Brianna, you're laughing. I think I hammered the 90 second rule into you, didn't I? You did. And there's just really no real reason that you can't answer these questions in 90 seconds. You want to be practicing reading the question or reading, reading the facts, reading the question, picking an answer and moving on to the next one. I think I described it after I took the exam as almost being in cruise control, just because it was like, bam, one, two, three, you've got to be practicing within that 90 seconds. And honestly, if you are really, truly using that selective intuition, you shouldn't even need a timer because reading the question and picking an answer is going to get you within that time frame. The minute you start overthinking yourself, you're going to pick the wrong answer every single time. Yeah, absolutely. June, did you want to add something to this? I'm asking her while she's trying to do this on the chat box. <laughs> yeah, Bob is here. Great. I'm trying to get Bob in too. All the coaches are here. I'm so excited. The reason we also think practice is the more you practice something, anxiety leaves. You don't fear it. You're not scared of it. You're used to it. And you don't obsess or think about it because it becomes second nature to you. So that's why we say practice now. So when you go in, you're used to doing it and it's just something you do. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I want to encourage people, if you feel like you're struggling with the MBE, you can absolutely still do the MBE workshop. That's the two calls with Amanda. You're going to study over the weekend, but you're going to do that anyway. And uh, it's a terrific workshop. We're getting great feedback on this and I'm really glad we offered it. Amanda, since it's your workshop, I suppose I should let you say something here about this if you want. <laughs> yeah. Everything that people have been echoing and the issues that students have been having, I think is addressed in the workshop. I can't stress enough that I have a lot of students, you know, this is really echoing what Brianna was saying. A lot of students think they're using selective intuition, but they are not. They're like fighting with themselves, wrestling with themselves for the answer, trying to go through memorizing law. When you work with me, I can really see it. I ask you how you approach the question and I can actually physically see you fighting for the answer in the front of your mind instead of just coming up with the answer. It is a skill that can be learned. And I think even students who have taken it just this last week have picked up just a few little things. So if they're on the edge, they're going to pick up those few extra points. They're like, yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't realize I'm approaching these questions with bias, or I'm picking the answer that sounds legal, or I throw out these answers because I don't like how they look. <laughs> That's not really selective intuition. Yeah. And I just want to add one more note about the workshops, all of them, the essay writing with Brianna, the performance test and MBE workshops with Amanda. We now have a four payment option for those courses. They're $300, but you can pay $75 a month for four months, which is a terrific, I don't know, 
I think that's a great way to be able to make it affordable. But I cannot emphasize enough to you how important and valuable these focused workshops are. If you haven't done one, I would really encourage you to sign up. It's first come, first serve. Before we went live today, we checked in with Brianna and Amanda and checked on schedules. And right now they're good, but there will come a point where we will they'll cry uncle, I think is what June said, and we will cut it off. I know June's probably put that link up there. Get on there and order now. Don't wait. It is it is going to take first come, first serve. All right. Another of the, thank you for those comments and welcome, Bob. Good. Glad to see you. We got the whole team here today. This is very exciting to me. One student wrote when I asked about their biggest challenge, they said, my two most persistent thoughts are one, have I done enough? And two, have I missed anything? Ooh, that's a tough one. Let me throw that one to you, Bob. The student that says, have I have I missed anything and have I done enough? What do we say to that student with a week to go? I think you see where you were when you started and see where you are right now. That's the answer to that question. And second of all, you are never going to do enough. Even if we have one year to study for the bar, it's never going to be enough. But you have to, you need to have that confidence that what I know is sufficient, is more than great enough to pass. Well, you're not looking to be sworn in by the chief judge of the Supreme Court. No, you're just looking to pass. And that is all you need. So you look at your progress, you should be satisfied with your progress and then have that confidence in yourself. Like, hey, I got this and then I'm going to knock it out of the park. That's literally what it is about. Yeah, I think that's right. Sammy, you went through this process of gradually getting closer and closer to the passing score. And I know that had to be a question in your mind going into the last exam before you passed. Did, had you, did you feel like you had done enough? Did you feel like you knew everything or missed anything? How did that play out for you? What I will say is I knew I gave it my all going in the last time. So I just, I had to have faith that was enough. Once you give it your, for me, once I gave it my all, I saw the difference of going from, did I do enough? Is there one thing that I could have done that I didn't do to, okay, what I did will get, is enough. What, I have, I have it. If it, like you said, if you know it, you, if you don't know it by now, you don't know it. So I just had to just know that I did all that I had, all that I could and trust it. Yeah. And these are mindset questions. So we're probably going to have June on camera more than usual, but June, let me toss that to you because I think that is a mindset as much as a substantive problem, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And I think also, I'm hearing a lot about nerves and anxiety in the past few days and of it being this negative thing. And I want you to try to reframe that into a positive. You're nervous. That's great. Everybody gets nervous. A athlete at the Olympics, when they have to get up and it's time, they've trained for this, running a marathon, they get to that starting gate, they're nervous, they've trained for this. An actor getting up on stage for the opening night of a play, they're nervous, they've trained for this. Rock stars who have toured huge arenas still get nervous when they get up for that first song. It happens. And that is your gauge that you are where you are supposed to be and embrace it and keep going instead of letting it stop you. And take that those nerves and be like, yes, this is what I have worked so hard for. Because without the exam date as your goal, the process, the goal, you there would be no end. And so don't look at it as, ah, Look at it as, yes, I'm ready, I'm fired up, and I'm nervous, but I'm doing it anyway. Because that is what successful people do. They're nervous. I guarantee you, Brianna, the first time she got up in a court of law was a bundle of nerves. Same with Amanda, same even Jackson and Tracy. But they did it anyway. And that is what you need to embrace when you walk into that bar exam, even if you're shaking nerves, just shake it and go and do it anyway, because you've got this, you're ready. Yeah. And I would encourage you to use the paraliminals. You go to MindTrax, M-I-N-D-T-R-X.com. You can get the entire package of paraliminals for $95 a year. And there are great ones there about anxiety and belief and personal genius and so on. You're never going to have done everything but you've done enough. That's the difference. And if you've been trusting the process, you're going to be there. So I think that's the most important part. 
Along the same lines, we got a question from a student who said, my biggest challenge is to not panic, even though I haven't finished with all the substantive subjects yet. Let me address first the substance part, and then I'll throw it off to the panel to talk about the rest of this question. Substantively, if you are not finished today on the Wednesday the 19th, if you still have subjects to go, I think now you're in a triage mode. If there's something you've never seen before, what I would do is skip the reading or photo read it if you're a photo reader, and then go to the lecture, run the lecture at a little faster speed, maybe a 1.2, 1.5, get through the lecture, and then do some practice, whether it's MBE or it's an essay in that subject. Don't go to the exam not having looked at the subject. That would be particularly difficult and bad. And I know sometimes people take my preview videos and they say, you didn't think that was going to be on the exam, so I didn't study it. That would be a mistake. You need to be acquainted with every subject in my view. So I think that's part of it. But what about the panic part? We're still a week away. Is it time to panic? Let me throw that off to you, Tracy. Is this the time to panic? No, this really gears in with the last comment about have I done enough and have I missed anything? There are all elements of anxiety. Look, I tried thousands of cases. I never went into a courtroom thinking that I had done enough, that I wasn't missing anything, that I was panicked because what's going to what's going to happen? Is my client even going to show up or on time? Or is there going to be some case law that I hadn't even considered? or some evidence that I overlooked or whatever. And actually, if you channel that into positive energy, all of a sudden your senses come alive. You listen better, you read better, you speak better, and you actually can take all of that, what was panic, what was anxiety, and use it to your benefit and be a better lawyer. And that's what you're doing next week. You're going in as lawyers, people. You're not going in as as first-year law students anymore. You're not going in as interns or clerks. You're going in as lawyers. And take that anxiety and channel it and use it to keep you very much on your toes next week. You are going to see some things that you haven't seen before. You are going to be surprised by some things that you thought you didn't know, and you actually do know. You are going to be surprised. So use it to your advantage. Any other comments about panicking? I think that the pet would probably agree panic is not a useful function right now. Brianna, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, I want to echo everything that they just said. Panic is driven by fear first and foremost. And yes, you have to turn that anxiety into either excitement or use it to use it in your favor. But one of the things, the concrete things that you can do to address the panic is coming up with that game plan. You know exactly how much time you have between now and exam day. You know how much you have left to do in any of that substantive study. It's in your module. You have timing in your module, you can break out your day and come up with a game plan to figure out exactly what you're going to be able to get through, how long it's going to take you to go through each lecture, even if it's on a faster speed, you cut that time in half. That Doing that exercise is going to reduce that anxiety, it's going to reduce that panic, and it's going to give you an idea of where you're going to get. So that is something concrete you can do for yourself to try to lower that panic and tuck it away. Good advice. Thank you. I want to keep moving because we've got a lot of challenges. I know every one of our coaches can speak to probably every one of these questions. Just jump in there, guys, if there's something that I'm missing. We got a question about essay writing that I thought was interesting. Students said, what do you do when you can't recall all the elements or state the law with the right buzzwords? I noticed that I'm missing key elements and buzzwords. I'm going to start with this one. I'm not a fan of, of reciting elements or using buzzwords. That is not where I think the writing goes. And that worries me a bit because the writing style is designed to make arguments and to use your common sense and to build off of that. Bob, let me throw this out to you. What's your take when somebody says, I can't memorize all the elements of the buzzwords? I think this is somebody who's trying to do IRAC and FLA combined. And so that's a recipe for disaster because and. I, pick, I always reference this when I have my coaching calls. There was one video that you said, 
the guy, the grader, they are not by, they are not lawyers. They are not professors. They are not JDs. They pay them $3.25 per booklet. So do you think somebody who is getting paid $3.25 is going to scratch his head to think about the four elements or the four amendments? I don't think so. So it's more, it's not necessarily knowing the buzzwords, common sense. And some of it, the question, you can figure out a way. It's all about creativity. That's how I put it. So don't label about knowing the elements or the buzzwords. That's more of an IRAC format. FLA is basically look at it. You look at the question, the buzzwords are just going to come out to you right from the question. Use your creativity and the knowledge that you know to come up with something that is passable, not top of the line passable, like pass. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Brianna, you teach the personal writing workshop. Do you tell people to recite elements and throwing buzzwords? Absolutely not. We've talked in my group coaching calls, we've talked a little bit about some of these buzzwords that people are probably mentioning that maybe it can trigger something. But I can tell you firsthand that a lot of my best essays that I work on with students that students turn into me don't have a single buzzword or L. Yeah, maybe they talk generically about the elements of the law, but it's them on paper. It's the common sense. It makes it flow. You can, I can just read it and it doesn't sound like you're talking to an attorney. You're not talking to a judge. You're talking to your client and your clients don't know best buzzwords. Your clients don't know the elements of the law either. Mm -hmm. I do not encourage you to sit down and try to memorize any kind of elements of law or buzzwords. Yeah. Sammy, when you took the exam last time, did you memorize elements and buzzwords? No. Oh, no, not at all. What I will tell you I did was I memorized the patterns. So I went over the past essays. Let's say I knew I had, I wasn't as, how do I say this, as great with what is constitutional law essays. So what I did was I would go back and review past constitutional law essays and get a pattern. The bar examiners, the prompts are, I'm not going to, for lack of better words, recycled somewhat. So you get the pattern that is going on. And I, I did use that to my advantage, but necessarily memorizing the law, no, because that's going to, with me, it tripped me up because now I'm anxious about, did I memorize it well? And it becomes an issue with making it flow when it's on the paper. So it's easier to just, once you have the key, the concept of it, it flows so much easier than trying to memorize verbatim law or buzzwords per se. Yeah. And I would say as a practical matter, if you've got mind maps, this is the time certainly to be pulling those out, reading them, working through them and getting yourself familiar with the concepts and putting it in your head that way. I'll also point out that if you are still struggling with essay writing, you can sign up for the personal writing workshop with Brianna. It's two sessions. She has time still. But again, it's first come, first serve. So don't sit on this. Go ahead and jump in and get into it. I haven't asked Amanda a whole lot of questions, but let me turn over now to you because one of the questions we got, Amanda, had to do with the MPT. And of course, you do our performance test workshop. And the student said, I'm struggling with completing the MPT on time. I practiced several times, but I can't fit it within the time frame. Oh, let me throw that to you. I guess to this student, I don't know who it is, but the first question I would ask is, are you sticking to the outline of time that's in the MPT workshop? Not only is it in Jackson's lecture, but it's in my MPT workshop that we go over. Are you only spending a minute to look at the call and try to figure out, are you in legal objective, legal persuasive, non-legal? That's just a minute or two minutes. And then are you giving yourself 10 minutes in the library and 10 minutes in the file? And you're really holding true to that. Assuming you don't have extra time or something, obviously if you have extra time, it's adjusted. In California, no, California is still 90 minutes. One 90 of those, minutes. yeah. Because a lot of students just spend too long there. And the question I ask students is, if I were to give you this entire library and file, and let's just say you did read every word, would you be able to recite it to me? back and tell me everything. And most students are like, no, of course not. Okay, then don't waste time reading every word. You're photo reading. If you're a photo reader, you're skimming and annotating if you are not a photo reader. So like limited time, because when you go to write an outline, and I'll talk about outlining in just a second, when you go to write an outline, you're going to flip back to the file in the library. 
the file in the library is not going anywhere. It will, they're not going to take it away from you right after you're done reading it. It's right there. So you can go back to it. Also, don't lose your common sense. You all know how to read a case. So when you get a case, you know that the law comes at the end of the case. And you know that the elements are numbered, one, two, three. That's what the judges do. It doesn't change just because we're in the MPT. The law is going to be at the end of the case. So skim through the facts, grab the law, star it, move on. For, third thing I said I'll say about outlining is do take time, do take that five to 10 minutes to outline your answer. What I do if, is if I have four major headings and I've left myself an hour to write, I say, okay, I got about 15 minutes per heading. And if I start writing at 9.30, I write to heading two, like 9.15, next heading 9.30, and then 9.45. Yes, some of the headings will require more than others, but this is just to keep myself accountable. So if I'm on heading one, which I see a lot of students do, and I've been writing for a half an hour, it's no, you got to move on because you could write a lot on the MPT, but you have to force yourself to move on. Yeah. And if that's just a mini version of the MPT workshop. That was so, like a 45 second version. <laughs> yes. I'm sure Judah's already put the link up. But again, if you want those two sessions with Amanda, you get a really in-depth look at the MPT. You have the opportunity to write one and get her feedback before the exam. Encourage you to do that. If you're not doing that, you should be writing MPTs and looking at the draft or point sheets, but make sure you're doing them under time conditions. Otherwise, it's a waste of your effort, I think. Oh, the other um, thing I'll say, can I just say this one thing? Yes. Sure. Please, for those of you who are practicing attorneys, or even if you are like on law review or moot court, please lower your expectation when they tell you to write a memo or be, this is not a real, it's not real. And they don't expect it to look like a memo. Please stop writing headings. Just go, right? Like <laughs> use FLA or modified FLA, but you got to let go of that like perfection of every sentence is perfect and you're citing the law and don't do that. Please don't do that. And don't make enemy, don't make perfect the enemy of passing. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, encourage people to hop on the MPT workshop. Another question that we got, Florida specific, but really could apply to California and Georgia as well. Student said, I'm struggling with how to keep things separate between the state distinctions and the MBE rules. I'm going to toss this one back to Sammy for a minute because you were in Florida. You had to do that on the Florida test. How did you manage that part? And I know you passed each part separately, so you, it wasn't quite so different, but you still had to deal with the distinctions. Yes. Just review, reviewing my notes and photo reading. What I did too, in my spare time, I made a chart. So I would go, especially evidence, I would make a chart. So let's say it's, what is our, I want to say civil versus like the state. I would do certain I would do charts to separate. So the area that differed, so I made sure I noted, okay, all right, let's say, for example, civil procedure. In Florida, the Florida rules, you have a certain amount of days. Regular civil procedure, multi-state, you have a certain amount of days. So I, I would, it would be a process of service. I just would put that on my little chart to know, okay, there's a difference. And then now when I had further, if I had more time, I would go into, all right, here's a Florida rule. Here's the multi-state rule, just to give myself a quick and keep it short and simple. You want little words. You don't want sentences because you're not, you want to make it where you can quickly look over it before exam, uh, exam day, or before you go in while you're eating lunch, make it, make simple charts with simple words so that you, it's a quick scan over, but that's what helps yeah, me the most. I like that idea of simple charts with simple words. <laughs> Bobka, you had to deal with this in Georgia distinctions. Correct. How did you deal with the distinction question? I think it's more knowing the nuances, especially because I think for Georgia as well, almost everything is the same with the exception of the state civil procedures section, but it's just knowing the nuances and at the same time, knowing what those nuances are. And then as Sammy said, just make that little chart, write it out. I think for us here in Georgia, you have to be, you cannot be personally served either by sheriff service or process server, but it's different everywhere else. So those little nuances, you make your chart, keep a note of it, and then you keep it moving. Yeah. Great. And I think with all of these sections, really what we're talking about is work to your weakness, work, be uncomfortable for the next few days. That's okay. Work to the things you don't know. I know that many of our panel 
I coached through their bar exams and I made them very uncomfortable the week before the exam. So it's, uh, it's not because I'm mean. I had somebody who looked at me and gave me the, the evil stare yesterday. I was like, you're being mean to me. I said, well, I'm not really being mean. I said, this is the time when you got to work in the things that are uncomfortable. You just have to do them. And a week from now, 10 days from now, it's all over. So just, I had a personal trainer once, <laughs> you can tell I still don't, who said you could do anything for 30 seconds or two minutes. You could do anything for the oh. next seven days, eight days. It is possible. Get through that. I Another, have a, a little, yeah. I have one little comment. Yes. I think when you Trace. get into the exam too, be present to which exam you're taking on which day. Yeah. So when you're taking the MBE, you don't have to worry about Florida, Georgia, California, you're taking the MBE. And when you're writing those essays, that's when you're not going to look at MBE rules. You're going to look at your own state's rules. So just be aware when you're in the exam, what matters at that particular time. Yeah, good comments. We got a fair number of comments that talked about trusting, blocking out doubt. Some of the questions, and sometimes these questions come up at the end and people say, can I trust my bar review? Can I trust my mentor? Can I trust the information? I found a typo on page whatever. Let me just say, after 30 plus years, and I don't know how many exams, it's more than 60 because there were those years when we gave multiple exams. I have yet to see anybody that failed because of a typo, just haven't. I've yet to see anybody who failed because on multiple choice question number 457, answer choice A wasn't as clear as answer choice B. Those are... I get that those are all irritations and they're annoyances. And trust me, I get more irritated and annoyed than anybody. I think the editors and the staff can tell you that. But in truth, none of it matters. When you get down to the end, it just doesn't matter. And if you start picking a fight at this stage, last weekend I said it was an irrational weekend, and it was. We got some doozies from students who just decided they were going to have a full-on temper tantrum over something, and it was different things. And our goal is to help fix it and make it right as quickly as we can. But the sense that everything should be perfect is unrealistic and doesn't work very well. And by the way, one of the big box bar reviews, their entire course just crashed last week. So there there are worse things that can happen. But I think there this sense of it's all gotta be perfect so that I can pass the exam is a misnomer. And people need to trust that what they're doing, the approach that we're taking works. All the people up here on the panel, it works. And I think they would all tell you it works, but it only works if you trust it. It doesn't work if you fight it. And I just want to say when it comes to this idea of trust, that's one level of trust. Then there's certainly the trust you have in the God of your understanding. There's the trust in your life and where your career path and life path is. And I think this is not the time to be getting meta about those things. It's to just put your head down, do the work, and go to the exam to do the best job you can do. I don't know if anybody on the panel wants to comment on that, but that's my take when I hear this who can I trust or what should I trust question? Oh, Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go, Bob. Go, Bob. Oh. go, go. I would say I started like that person, but look at me now. Brianna is my, was my mentor. We are colleagues now. Amanda, like I said, how do you like us now? And we all took CBR. So for me personally, I was apprehensive at the start. June will tell you, Jackson will tell you, I was sending emails. After a certain point in time, I was like, is this really productive? Is this what I want to do? Or do I want to focus on the exam to pass? And lo and behold, I trusted the process and I passed. So what, there is no perfect scenario in which everything in the course is going to be top of the line and then there has to be. No, everything man-made, it's in, it's, everything man-made has a problem. But you don't need to focus on the problem. You need to focus on the, pro on the process to get to where you want to be. And that is passing. So if you're mad about question 452 not being correct, how is you being mad enhancing your progress to pass? So you need to redirect your energy to basically be like, all right, this is a man-made error. Let's keep it moving. And you keep it focused on the bigger picture. Don't focus on petty stuff that is of no consequence. So that's what I got. Also, Good. yeah, Babka, that's so great. I just love how you're saying like focus the energy because let's not forget have the bar examiners ever written a question that they were like, oops, there was no correct answer there, or oops, two of the answers were correct. So don't get this way on the bar. 
because we know they've thrown out answers because they said, oh, the answer we thought was right was wrong. There has been typos. Babka said anything man-made, person-made, right, is can be fallible. And it's the same goes for the bar exam. So don't get too hung up if you think you see a, t a typo on the bar and sit there and stop. Just keep moving because it's not going to matter. And there might be a typo on the bar exam. So just remember that. Yeah, it happens for sure. Look, trusting the process is a big deal. And it's something that we want you to be doing. We had a student that wrote a really powerful note to me about this. And the student said, it's self-sabotage. Said, I know that on test day, I'm going to be as prepared as possible. But I feel like somewhere deep down, I'm struggling with the idea that I have had to take this exact test so many times and feeling like no matter what, I don't think it'll happen for me. But I know that's not true. June, I want to throw that back to you because that's really, that's up in your head, isn't it? That's a mindset issue. It is. And it, it, the bottom line, the bottom line is you don't trust yourself. You don't believe in yourself. And that is the number one thing you have to have. I'm sure you trust other people in your life. You trust the pilot of an airplane you get into. You trust people you don't even know with your life, but we don't trust ourselves to make good decisions. We'll start today. You are making good decisions. And even when we make mistakes, it's okay. That's how we learn. Those are the learning, the learning that really counts to us. When we make mistakes, that's what sticks with us. When it's easy, we don't remember that. We remember from our mistakes. So start believing in yourself and trusting yourself. And like Bob just said, we only have so much energy. It's like when you go to Starbucks and I tell them my name is June and they write Jane on my cup, happens all the time. And I get upset. Why would I get upset? I know what my name is. I believe my name is June. <laughs> I trust 100% that my name is June. So Jane on my cup does not change what I believe about myself or trust about myself. And that is it. And then the second thing, part of that is because I, I talked to a student earlier today. The big thing I see, especially going into the bar exam, is we create our narrative or our story of how the day is going to roll out. And then when that doesn't happen, we self-sabotage, derail, upset ourselves, and lose the process of where we need to be. Like Sammy said, she forgot her sleeve. She had to walk back out, come back in. She could have let that completely derail her whole exam, just that one little thing. So my advice is don't create a story of your day or how it's going to roll out. Create an intention of how you want to feel for that day for each test, for each part, you stay in that. And when something comes at you, you remember, this is my intention. This is where I'm staying. Nothing's going to remove me from that. And that will help you stay more on course throughout the process. And, and again, you. like you said, when you get upset at these little tiny things, it's kind of procrastination and deflection and self-sabotage. That energy of sending that email to Jackson, it could have got you through a whole outline probably. Yes, it probably could have. And I will say we get a lot of compliments. A lot of people saying I've never felt so prepared as I am for the exam. And I, this course has done a lot for me. I'd like to think, and I do think this is the best bar review course in America. It's the most comprehensive. It offers the most in the way of services and resources. It spends the least on advertising. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. You don't get quite that, that we're a hidden gem, but we're here for you. Tracy, I want to turn this over to you. I know you wanted to talk about container ships for a couple of minutes and then we'll wrap up. Is this a good, let me toss it to you and you can explain what a container ship has to do with a week before the bar exam. Okay. I was in Charleston a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that I did was take a little trip out into the harbor and just get a uh, a feel for what the Charleston Harbor was like. And if you can see on my screen, this big barge that is actually a container ship. And you can see it's 
Hug Lloyd, and it's got all kinds of different containers. There's also rain on the window, which I think is apropos because this is a time where it can be foggy for you at times. It can be hard to see things clearly. You can also see up in the right-hand corner, especially some reflections of lights, that lights are actually illuminating what the scene is and the reflection and where I am. So what does this have to do at all with what you're doing? How do you suppose that the people that are trying to access a container, how do you suppose they do that? They do that with these big cranes, but behind the scenes, there's a little tiny room, a little tiny control room where you know what they have in there? They have a mind map. They have a map of what's in all these containers. And once the person accessing the information and accessing where the containers are that they need, once that person is going and using their mind map, it's not confusing at all. They know exactly what is in each of these containers and they know how to get to them. This is like you this week, okay? I know there's some rain. I know there's some discontent, but it's not bright sunny days necessarily. There are days when you have self-doubt. That may be a little bit of the rain. There may be some days where you can't see things clearly. There may be some days where things just seem really wet and inaccessible to you. But remember, those cranes are all the tools that you've learned during your CBR process. Those are those cranes represent Amanda and Brianna and Bobka and Sammy and me and June and Jackson. And we are giving you tools to access those containers when you need them. And behind the scenes are the mind maps. And the mind maps are the things that will show you what you need to do when to access the information. This is a big, strong ship. It is a reliable tool. And that's what you are going to be going in next week. You're going to get access to your containers by using the tools we've given you and the mind maps of where you're going to find these things. On my computer, I have these little post-it notes that are like my container ships. There are these little tiny, little tiny notes and they are on the bottom of my ship, if you will, my desktop. And three of them popped up to me today. The first one said, feel fear, act anyway, take courage with you. Feel the fear, act anyway, take courage with you. The second one that popped up says, just show up, just show up. It'll be there for you, just show up. And the third one, and this is the one that I really want you to hear today, this is what I was called to do. This vocation, this sacred journey that you're on, this bar exam, this profession that makes us crazy and also improves the world and makes us feel so good about what we're doing. This is what we were called to do. And this is what you are called to do. And don't you ever forget that. Just show up, feel the fear, act anyway. Take courage with you, take the container ship with you, all your tools and your mind maps in your head. And you know what? You're going to be just fine. We believe in you. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate that and appreciate those comments. We have reached the end of our process for, for the webinars. This is our last one before the exam. We're going to take off the month of August, as you heard, and we'll be back in September where his results start to come out. I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. And maybe others on the call today have some things that they want to say as well. I am very proud of all of you for the work that you've done. I'm proud of what you've put in, in a, a difficult environment. And make no mistake, the bar exam right now is the most difficult it's ever been in the 30 plus years that I've been dealing with it. But you have persevered. You've come to this point. And now you're ready to start your career. This isn't the end of your work. It's the beginning of your work. It's really gratifying for me <clears throat> to be able to work with Amanda and Bobka and Sammy and Brianna, because at one point they were all in this process and now they're on the other side and they're extraordinary, capable and wonderful attorneys, but also just wonderful coaches and mentors. June, you and I have been doing this a long time. 
really long time. And it's every exam feels like graduating a new class of people out there. And we were excited for everyone that's taking the exam. We know that there are going to be challenges, but we also know there's going to be moments of great joy and elation in a couple of months' time. And it is the thing that keeps me going, and I think it keeps all of us going, is the sense that we're making a difference. Every one of you will make a difference when you cross that line and you become a member of the bar. You will. And this is why we do the work that we do. It's why I've recruited Tracy out of retirement to come back and work with us. It's why each person on this staff is here because, not because I'm paying them a lot of money, to be honest, I don't pay them anything to speak of. It's because they care. They care about you and they care about what this process is. And I hope that each of you have understood in this period of time that we care about you as an individual. We know you as an individual and we want your individual success. At the same time, we recognize that now it's up to you and we don't get to take the test for you much as we might like to. So I often say to our team, we are responsible to you, but not for you. And I hope that as you go in to take the exam, that you are responsible for your own performance, that you walk out with your head up high. Don't worry about whether you passed or failed. Just worry about doing the best you can. Go in with professionalism. Go in with confidence. Go in knowing that you have been better trained, I think, for most of you in this course than you ever were before. And if you can use even a fraction of what we've taught you, that's a fraction better than you would have been before, and you can do it. So thank you all for your good humor and patience with me. I know that I'm, I can be prickly, <laughs> and, but love this work, and I love working with all of you, certainly those of you here on the, the team, Tracy, Amanda, Bobka, Brianna, June, Sammy, oh my gosh, you guys are awesome, and uh, this has been the most fun that I've had, really, leading up to an exam, I think in part because I've got such an incredible set of colleagues here, so I just want to thank you for that. So, June, I'm going to give you last word because you know you got seniority here no pressure feel the fear do it anyway yeah so i i want to i guess echo what tracy said feel the fear the next few days the fear is going to come in and you're going to start to second guess and maybe you're not ready maybe you need more time and think about maybe i shouldn't stop don't listen to any of it because fear is a liar keep going. You've come this far and you did not come this far to only come this far. Do not stop. I remember having the same conversation with Sammy and I forbade her, would not let her stop and she passed. Okay. So do not stop. Keep going. You have come this far. You can do this. Stop thinking there's a magic trick or tip or tool. You have everything you need. You had trust in that a hundred percent. You are ready. Just go in there and do your best. That's all you can do. That's all anybody can do. And that is what you're there. As Tracy said, show up for you and do what you're here to do. So we can welcome you to the other side because the other side desperately needs you. And with that, you. I bid you a fond adieu and I'll okay. see you. See you tonight on the call. Brianna, you've been with me for a long time. You've seen this from both sides, from some success and some frustration. Any last thoughts you want to share with folks going into these next few days? I, yes. And I'm going to keep this extremely short. Don't let your past dictate your future. Don't let every single no you've already heard in your life prevent you from finding your yes. The words that changed my life, remember, boss up and change your life. And on exam day, I want you to stand up and tell yourself in the mirror, today is the first day of the rest of my life. Thank you. Sammy, you're the most recent person to cross the finish line here. What do you say to these folks who are a week away? Do it. Put your head, get your head in the books and just get it done. Give it your last bit. Without tiring yourself out, you can do it. Like June said, you didn't come this far just to come this far. I, I have faith in you guys and you guys definitely 
have what it takes to get on the other side and meet us there. Yeah, thanks. And I'm so excited that you've been coaching for us. So this is uh, wonderful. Bobka, you have such a wonderful spirit about these things. And I know that your students on your group calls just love hearing you. I think we need to hear from you here to, to wrap up too. I would say, Tracy, Brianna, June, Sam, I think everybody has hit the nail on the head. But I will equally say in this week going up to the bar exam, you need self-care as well. You need to take care of yourself. Sleep, eat, because you're not going to get to next week if you don't eat. You're going to starve. You're going to die. And with you, you haven't done all of that to come and get to this point. So you need to eat. Have that moment of self-care. This time when I was playing video games, people were looking at me like I was crazy. But that was my own way to relax. And at the same time, have a good sleep routine. Don't stress over the small stuff. Block out the noise. Anybody comes about respectfully, I will deal with this at the end of the month. You see, you close it down there. And then I will also say this, Jackson is going to kill me, but I will say it. You're going to, when you're doing the MBEs, you're going to hear Jackson's voice in your head. It's very common. It has happened to me and it's going to happen to you. And when you hear that voice, don't freak out. It's him yelling at you to not change your answer. That's literally what he's there to do. Don't change your answers. Go with your gut. And as Nike says, just do it. We are rooting for you. We are waiting for you on the other side. And the view is much better on this other side. So we have we've given you all the tools. The faith is there. The belief is there. Trust your gut. Trust the work you've done. And we're waiting for you on the other side with open arms. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amanda, I'm giving you the very last word. How's that? Oh, geez. We'll keep it very short, echo what everyone says, and that you have everything inside you that you need to succeed. It is all within you. And if you're sitting here, we have such a diverse group of students. If you come from a marginalized background, I mean that as like race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, ability, religion second time taker, full time taker, parent taker, so many different ways that this test marginalizes. Just remember that it is radical for you to be sitting in the room. It is radical that you have graduated law school and you should be proud of that. So go in with that pride and show the examiners that you belong as part of the bar. Thank you all. This has been a wonderful series. And we will, of course, be here all the way through the exam. If you need anything, reach out. There's still the opportunity to do these workshops with Amanda and Brianna. I would encourage you to sign up for those and uh, get on the group coaching calls that still are going this uh, next few days. And we will be anxious to hear about your stories after the exam. And we will see you in this format again in September. And everybody have a wonderful August. <laughs> and we'll see you in a few weeks. With that, bye-bye, everybody. Take care.